everyone, welcome, I'm Robert, and the People's Choice Top 200 Solo Games of 2023 by One Player Guild have all finally been unveiled, and it's been really exciting seeing the results daily. Now it's time to discuss my Top 20 Solo Board Game votes. Keep in mind that there were many amazing games that I couldn't fit in my Top 20, so make sure to check out the previous video highlighting my Top 25 Honorable Mentions. You can also check out my video from 2022 and see how it compares to this year. I'll leave links in the description. And now, without further ado, let's get started. All right, first at number 20, we have Jump Drive. And I just can't say enough good things about this game. I already featured this game on my top solo board games for beginners list. If you haven't checked out that list, I'll leave a link to that. Uh, so what is this? This is a, a Tableau engine builder game that plays really quick and it has low table footprint and it has very minimal amount of components. Just a big deck of cards, some tokens, that's it, you're good to go. And check this out, it's just front and back of uh, one sheet, all right, for rules to learn it. Uh, and it's just so wonderful. Now the thing is, uh, it, it didn't used to be officially soloable. The, uh, the way that people soloed this uh, there's a campaign uh, mode that was created by a board game geek user called Epio, uh, and it became so popular that it actually got turned into an official solo mode in the Terminal Velocity expansion. I have not got that expansion yet, I still need to get my hands on it. Uh, it doesn't just add the solo mode, it adds other cool things like starting planets and things like that. Uh, but just awesome story. I just love that that uh, that Epio fella just got to, uh, to work with the designer in an official capacity. And just super kudos because when I tried this expansion for the first time, this was my intro to the Race for the Galaxy uh, system. Okay, I loved it so much. I went ahead and got the app version uh, of Race for the Galaxy, and I also got hooked on that. So. Uh, for my full Race for the Galaxy experience, I just play the app, which I've played a ton, love it. And then for my physical, I just uh, use uh, Jump Drive, okay? And uh, you can get, uh, I'll leave a link to that, you can get the, um, the uh, solo variant for this uh, using these cards. I created this file that is based on Epio's campaign, which uh, before that you just needed to print a piece of paper, but I just have, I just wanted to have it in card form. So uh, you can uh, print this file if you prefer, or simply buy the uh, terminal velocity e expansion. Uh, but this is an amazing package. It has a low price. It tends to go for around 20 bucks. And this is just one of those board games that uh, I love because it's just a deck of cards and some tokens. That said, there's other favorites of mine in my collection that do a lot just with a few cards and some tokens. And this is just one of those uh, exemplary uh, board games that does that with that component uh, limitation. Although it is a pretty big deck, but with that comes a lot of variety. So it's just... It's just absolutely wonderful. It just offers uh, very quick uh, sessions with uh, low table footprint and just great combos. And it just gives you that uh, race for the galaxy. Uh, it scratches that edge really quick. Uh, and it warrants, uh, typically when you pick it up, you just want to play it a bunch of times in a row. So just amazing game. Again, can't say enough good things about it. If you haven't picked this up, make sure you do. Jump drive, amazing board game. Next, we have Naturopolis, and this replaced Sprawlopolis for me, which was in my top 20 last year. And this is my favorite button shy game by far, and my most played button shy game. And the reason why I like this over Sprawlopolis is because I feel that the scoring conditions here are a lot more polished. Uh, Sprawlopolis was the first game in the series, and it is uh, justifiably so, uh, the most popular uh, title from Button Shy. From what I understand, it seems to, to always be at the top, the most sold, best, uh, you know, ranking, everything. Uh, and it is an amazing design. Uh, but sometimes the scoring conditions in that game to me felt a bit uh, punishing and re really, really tough to reach that scoring threshold to win. Here, I'm not gonna say that they're necessarily easier, but I just, I just feel that they're more refined, and I do tend to win a bit more in this game. Uh, I've heard that some people have had different experiences, some people actually found them harder, uh, but that was my experience. I just prefer this a lot more, not just because of the scoring conditions, I also much prefer the color uh, scheme and 
uh, the uh, nature theme and aesthetic just uh, I just prefer this a whole lot more versus the city theme not that I have anything against city themes uh, but if I'm gonna uh, play pick this up versus Sprawlopolis I just prefer how this looks a lot more and I like the uh, the new river uh, the new rivers uh, for scoring conditions and it just kind of spices up the formula a bit and this is the third game in the Opolis series and to me it just it just shows that they have learned a lot and that this game uh, just offers those more polished uh, uh, scoring conditions and not just that even the graphic design is a bit more polished uh, it's it's kind of subtle but just comparing the two uh, this definitely uh, ha had a lot of love and you know experience uh, sh shown on it that uh, they put into this but yeah Naturopolis my absolute favorite uh, button shy game and I still need to try Rove uh, I know that that's a lot of people's new favorite uh, button shy game it seems to be ranking high more and more uh, throughout the years, but uh, I need to. Uh, I still need to try it. Maybe that'll trump this uh, game as my favorite button shy title. But yeah, Naturopolis, my absolute favorite button shy game. Moving on, we have Dragons of Etching Stone. This is an 18 card game that you can buy from the Game Crafter, or you can also get the PMP files from PMP Arcade. I played this for the first time this year, and it absolutely blew me away. It's heavily inspired by games like Mage Knight and Mistfall. It offers awesome deterministic combat and incredible replayability, and it distills those games and all in just 18 cards. It's just nuts what this game pulls off with that component limitation. And it absolutely blows out of the water any other portable game that I've played. Um, this game used to be uh, last year, uh, because I hadn't played it last year, uh, what the game that was in place of this was Palm Island. And well, let me show you what happened with that. Aww. 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 So yeah, I still love Palm Island, but there's gonna be very few scenarios where I'd rather play that over this. I do still play it in okay, on occasion, but uh, this game definitely is a bit more involved. The rulebook is uh, bigger than the one in uh, Palm Island, but it's very well written and if you've played games like Mage Knight or Mistfall, uh, stuff will just click, okay? And it's just excellent and so well made, especially if uh, you like Mage Knight, you're gonna appreciate this even more. But I've heard from folks that have not played Mage Knight that they've been able to play this and enjoy it and appreciate it, but uh, to me this is the ultimate portable game. Nothing uh, has offered the experience this has offered to me with such a component limitation. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I haven't tried Rove yet. Some people say that that game is very brain burning. Uh, I, and even if I do try it later, I just don't see myself liking that one over this because this definitely is a bit of a love letter to Mage Knight and I'm a big fan of Mage Knight. So uh, I, just, this, I just really gravitate towards the type of combat and experience that uh, this offers with the deterministic combat. So Dragons of Etching Stone, an absolute gem of a portable game. Make sure to check out my review for extended thoughts. And if you have not tried this game, just go ahead and buy it. It's just amazing. And just to me, for, uh, you know, for my money, the best 18 card game you could possibly buy. Moving on, we have Cartographers. This is the only verb and ride game in my list, including the honorable mentions video. And uh, I've noticed uh, throughout the years, as I've tried multiple uh, games, uh, including various uh, verb and rides, I don't tend to gravitate towards those games too much. Uh, I tend to keep them on the lighter side. Uh, I'll try them, but I'll rarely revisit them. And Cartographers is the only one that I would happily play almost just about any time. I just love uh, Cartographers. I love the uh, Tetris-like uh, Tetris -like puzzle that, uh, that it offers. And I love the creative aspect of it. I love that you can draw your maps as detailed as you want them to be. Uh, it's easy to pick up. It's, it doesn't occupy that much uh, table space, so low, low footprint, small box, easy to learn, just gorgeous illustrations. Uh, just what is there not to like about this game? I, I absolutely adore it. Uh, I do need to try... Uh, I do need to try Hadrian's Wall, speaking of urban rights. That's one of the biggest, uh, you know, most loved 
Bourbon Riot games out there. It's been on my pile of shame for a while. Maybe once I do get around trying it, uh, it might trump even this one uh, for, for me. And uh, maybe that way at least I'll have another uh, Bourbon Riot game uh, in my list or at the very least in my honorable mentions. But uh, yeah, until then, Cartographers is uh, my top Bourbon Riot game and the only one in it, actually. So yeah, Cartographers, uh, awesome game. And by the way, I did include this in my uh, top 20 uh, solo board games for beginners. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. And I do love that this game because it's it's uh, pretty easy to learn and offers a great experience. I, I do list this in, in that list as well. I just think it's a great gateway uh, intro solo game as well. So Cartographers, awesome board game. Next, we have Space Empires for X. Uh, this is a Hex Encounter uh, title that really reminds me of Master of Orion, if you've played uh, that classic game, Master of Orion 2 specifically. Uh, and this is how I describe it, it's basically Master of Orion, the board game. Uh, and I know that there's Space Empires is an actual video game series from what I understand. Never played that one. I only played Master of Orion. Uh, but uh, this game is the quintessential solo for X that you can get, get to date. I have not played anything that has come close to emulate a video game uh, so well. Uh, and some people have described this as Excel, the board game, because... Uh, the way that you manage your empire uh, is with a sheet. Uh, there's a sheet where you keep track of your technology upgrades, your economy, uh, and I did not mind that. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, all of that, it's, um, it's kept track of using a sheet, and then you have your big space map uh, with hexes, and the exploration aspect is awesome. I love venturing into space and expanding my empire. Uh, there's two ways to play solo. There's a doomsday machine mode where you're just giving a set amount of turns for you to build up your empire and then a doomsday machine will arrive and you have to confront it, okay? And then there's also an alien empire mode where there's alien factions that control an empire in a very player-like manner and then, you know, you, you keep you do the upkeep for them and then you just have to defeat them, basically. Uh, there's an app if you want to do it, uh, if you want to manage the alien empires with an app, there's an option too, but I didn't mind just doing it uh, without the app. Works great. Uh, there's expansions for this. I have the first two in shrink wrap, and then there's the third and final one in development by GMT, and I've pre-ordered it. I'm waiting for that to arrive because I want to open all the expansions at the same time and have the most epic and amazing space opera solo board gaming experience i'm really excited for when that happens um and yeah nothing really has matched this as far as 4x titles uh, 4x genre goes uh, i also tried uh, just a little sidetrack about 4x's 4x games uh, i've also tried um heroes of land air and sea if you want a more warcraft like experience that one uh, it, it did that, but I ended up letting it go because it was a big box and it was not very pleasant to learn the rule book. Uh, yeah, I, it just wasn't a very pleasant game to learn, in my opinion. Uh, there's also Scythe, which is a 4X game. Uh, to some extent, the combat's kind of the weakest part of it. I like combat in this game. It's pretty simplistic, but I, I prefer it much more than Scythe. I like amassing uh, armies of, uh, you know, fleets of ships, uh, uh, of ships. Fleets of ships, uh, fleets of uh, ships. Uh, that really cool doing that here. Um, and there's also another 4x that I mentioned in my uh, honorable mentions, and that's uh, Civilization. Now that one isn't medieval; it's just kind of through different uh, periods of time. Uh, but the combat also isn't really the reason why you buy that game. Uh, I also want to mention that this game is a pleasure to learn. Uh, the rule book's very clean. Uh, I had no problem learning this. And uh, it's just a bit more simplistic component-wise. You have a bunch of, uh, you know, counter chits and big board and your uh, empire sheet to keep track of using uh, pencil and eraser or a pen, and you're good to go. Uh, just amazing, amazing experience. I don't think this will ever leave my top uh, 20, to be honest with you. I just love playing Master of Orion uh, growing up, even though I sucked at it, as I mentioned in my, uh, as I mentioned in my um, 
uh, honorable mentions list. I just I I played a lot of uh, 4x games on PC, but I just wasn't very good at, at them. But this one, uh, you know, I actually was able to do better because uh, I I understand the system better because of the rulebook. So. Um, just a great experience and one of my favorite GMT titles and the quintessential solo 4X experience, Space Empires. Moving on, we have Ark Nova and I played it for the first time this year and it was a very pleasant surprise. I made a quick uh, solo impressions video if you want to watch that where I also discuss the storage aspect because I always like talking about storage. So I'll leave a link to that if you're interested. But uh, I just love the puzzle that this offers. Uh, it's a uh, engine builder, it's a tableau builder game, but there's also a polyomino uh, aspect uh, of it where you have your zoo and you have to uh, try to fill up all the spaces. Uh, and then there's the big board with the reputation track for your zoo and also the conservation points. Uh, so there is a, uh, in the solo mode, there is a hard uh, wing condition, okay? If you don't uh, if you don't reach the threshold where your conservation points and your reputation points reach or pass each other, you lose. And the built-in solo mode in the box works perfectly fine for me. There's little to no upkeep, honestly. Uh, I know that the Arno uh, variant is out there. I'm just not interested in it at the moment because I just love how low maintenance this is and it just allows me to focus on my own puzzle. Uh, and I just love how all the systems here that this game has interweave and works so well together. You have the tableau building, you have the conservation points and the um, the reputation points, you have uh, the polyomino uh, puzzle, you have the action card row which is a, um, a um, mechanic from uh, Civilization and New Dawn and I love how it uses it here. It doesn't use it as extensively as uh, Civilization does but it uses it it, it makes good use of it uh, and it just creates interesting turns, interesting decisions and uh, the, there's so much variability from the giant deck of cards and also the different maps. There's a new expansion coming out and mainly the reason why I want to get it is because I like the aquatic theme and I've heard good things about it so far so I'll probably uh, get it but just even without the expansion I've barely scratched the surface of, of what's in this box. There's just so much variety just from the, uh, there's different difficulty settings, there's the different suits, and no two games will ever play the same. That deck, uh, the gigantic deck of cards, uh, just creates a different puzzle uh, from the available, the row of available cards for you to uh, grab each turn. It just creates a different puzzle because you're gonna have to work with what's available to you. There's a, definitely a bit of a lock of the draw, but typically, if you stick with a strategy, uh, it, it should uh, pay off. The, the only caveat I'll say, uh, uh, is uh, I, the rules, there's a lot going on in the rules and there's many things that one could easily get wrong, okay? Uh, but as far as these tableau building type games go, uh, I know some people say that comparing this to Terraforming Mars is, is not apt. Uh, I, I do see how there's a bit of a comparison, uh, you know, with the tableau building aspect. There's some take that, um, L, uh, like, effects uh, that, uh, just like in, in Terraforming Mars, um, there's the use of stock imagery, which I think works here. Uh, I've, I've, I think I've discussed this in the past with Terraforming Mars. I detest the, uh, the appearance of Terraforming Mars, the design, the images, the, like the stock imagery. Uh, I just could, couldn't enjoy the physical version because of that. I do enjoy the Terraforming Mars app. But uh, Arc Nova, I think uh, the, the zoo and animal theme uh, stock image, good use of it. Uh, so I didn't mind that. And... Uh, although the, the graphic design is not the most attractive, at least it's clear and you know you, you can find you, you can browse the information just uh, fine. Okay, uh, so the aesthetic was not an issue with this game for me, like terraforming Mars was. Um, but yeah, I just I just love the puzzle that uh, this offers. It's just a lot of fun, and I just love how all the systems connect. Uh, so yeah, that's Arc Nova. Uh, we'll see if it'll stay on my top twenty next year. Uh, but this year, this year definitely was a, a very, very pleasant surprise and I've enjoyed every playthrough of it so far. Moving on, we have After the Virus. I played it for the first time this year, although I avoided it for the longest time because, gosh, look at that art. Ugh. This cover just does not do this game any justice or any favors. But folks, trust me, once you play it, you're not going to care about the art. It might even grow on you. 
This game is just one of the best deck builders that I've played solo ever. It's just so good. The card play is just so satisfying. Uh, there's so much replayability because of the scenarios and the different characters. There's four characters in the box that you can play with. And there's some that you can uh, download from the website, all right? Uh, you can get these promo uh, characters, okay? Uh, so through the promo characters and just the um, the different scenarios, and there's even difficult, different difficulty settings for each scenario, it's just so wonderful. And um, the, what this game does with just a deck of cards, remember what I was talking about uh, when, I, uh, when I was discussing Jump Drive? Uh, those games that do, that do so much just with a deck of cards and some tokens. And this could have just been uh, cards, really. So I'm not even going to count the character boards as like an uh, extra component. This could have just been a card uh, just fun and it would have worked. And you could keep track of that with dice. But, uh, man, what this game does with just a deck of cards is insane. So uh, just amazing deck, build, deck building. And it's different from other deck builders in the sense that uh, you actually want to grow the size of your deck. You don't. You typically don't want to... Um, trash cards from your deck or exile them or you know how different games um, use different terms for that but you actually want to increase your deck in size because uh, the zombies clog up your deck so if you don't have other good cards to um, you know counter the amount of zombies clogging up your deck you might instantly lose from drawing a hand of uh, cards full of zombies so the zombies actually go in your deck all right and if you draw a zombie uh, when you start your turn and you draw your hand it has to go in front of you and you have to, you know, you have to kill it, okay? And if you don't draw other cards or if you don't have other cards in play to deal with those zombies that you draw, you lose. So it's just very interesting how uh, this game uses deck building mechanics. Very different from any other deck builder that I've played in my collection. And one thing I really love about this is that if you're only going to play this game solo, it basically comes with three copies, okay? Because it's meant to be played with up to three players. And each player has its own copy of the entire game sans uh, the character cards. There's only one copy of each character card. But if you photocopy each uh, character card, you can just grab one of the other decks that are meant for other players and you get, a, you get a new copy. And each player even gets a set of the tokens that you need, all right? Uh, so what I did here was, uh, you know, I just, I had one of these uh, Ultra Pro uh, boxes from when I used to play Magic and check it out. I have photocopied, I have the photocopied characters and even the promo characters that you can get from the uh, Fricks uh, Games website. Uh, you know, I went ahead and, and printed those as well. So you have a photocopy of each character right there. Uh, you go ahead and also uh, photocopy the, or print the rules directly from their website and the scenarios, and you're good to go. Uh, and you have the, the tokens right there and the deck. That is it. So you, get, you basically get another copy of the, of the game that you can take with you. Uh, I, I just love that about it. And I, I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting that when I bought it. Uh, it was just a nice little surprise. And I also have the expansion, although I have not uh, I have not tried the expansion content yet. And it all fits back in the original box, by the way, which I love. It's sleeved even, okay? Uh, so, uh, I mean, from what I've read, it just, you know, it adds a campaign element and it, it just, it, the, the replayability just explodes with uh, the expansion. But even then, I, I have not... Um, I have not gone through all the scenarios yet. I've, I've gone through more than half of them, but I've played the the first page of scenarios multiple times. And when I first got this uh, game this year, folks, I played it for like two to three weeks, nonstop. That this is the game. Uh, one of uh, you know, the, there's a couple others that also have that attribute this year. But this this is one of those highlights of the year where that when when I got it, I played nothing but this for like three weeks. It's just so good. I love the card play, the weapons. Uh, you know, like uh, it's it's kind of thematic too, uh, like some of the cards, how uh, there's vehicles that you use to run over uh, zombies and things like that. There's bombs that um, like explode everything, basically. Uh, there's chainsaws, you know, all the, all the, you know, even, I didn't even mention this, like this is a great zombie game. If you don't have a zombie game in your collection, I think this is the, uh, I didn't even think about this. <laughs> this is the zombie game in my collection. Uh, so if I want to check that box, this is it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, full stop, this is the zombie game in my collection. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you get this game, make sure that you download the updated scenario cards from the Freaks Games website because they tweak the scenarios to make them a bit more balanced, okay? Also the rulebook uh, as well. Uh, and I saw a picture 
uh, that there's some uh, versions of this game that it, it has a red corner that says revised scenarios on the back, okay? Uh, so if your copy doesn't say that, make sure that you go to their website and print the latest versions of the scenarios. Uh, when I bought this copy, it had the old scenarios. Uh, so they do feel a bit more fair and balanced, okay? Uh, and last thing, I just want to give this game, uh, and sometimes like just kind of as a joke, I say how games give me like a dopamine hit or whatever. Well, uh, this year I'm proud to announce that this game gets uh, my first ever certified dopamine award <laughs> this game gave me so many dopamine hits and i just wanted to keep playing it over and over and over so dopamine seal of approval by me <laughs> just love this game so much folks like just get over the art like i did uh and just go ahead and try it trust me i still think the art uh, for the most part like i think it's the cover mo mostly the cover the cover of this game just does not, not do it any favors but once you look at the cards there it's a bit more tolerable okay it's just the cover the cover just does just does this game no justice but uh once you get past that folks just amazing solo deck builder all right if you haven't tried it make sure you do after the virus moving on we have star wars imperial assault one of the best solo star wars board game experiences you could get and i played it for the first time last year and it made it to my top 20 last year as well uh, so that hasn't changed. Now, I have not played it again this year, and the reason for that is uh, that I'm in the process of painting the miniatures of a bunch of expansions that I got, okay? I painted everything in the base set, and that's how I experienced it, and uh, I just want to make sure that, just to be consistent, I paint everything else that I bought before I ever open it again. I also need to come up with a decent storage solution, because this is definitely... Uh, a bit of a complicated game to store uh, properly to ease setup. Uh, I also made a purchasing uh, guide for solo players. Uh, I'll link a video and also the file, okay, if, if you're interested. Uh, but if you're looking for a solo Star Wars experience, this is definitely an amazing choice. And it, not only that, it offers a great campaign experience as well as a miniature wargaming skirmish-ish type of experience. I, I love that. It just checks a bunch of boxes in that regard. Uh, now, the first time I played it was using the official app, and it was a beautiful experience. Loved it. I then used the Red Jack Automated em uh, Empire system, and I prefer that even more. I'm a bit of a um, analog evangelist when it comes to board games. I'm not completely opposed to trying apps, uh, and you know because of the fact that it's Star Wars and the app was very well made and produced, that helped but I typically try to keep electronics outside of the board game uh, experience. But uh, again, again, I'm not opposed to it completely, but uh, I definitely gravitate more towards analog experience and the Red Jack system is absolutely incredible. It does require you to print a bunch of cards. Uh, I went ahead and, and printed all of them uh, and it's just a great system to play solo. Uh, and it, it basically takes the role of the um, of the uh, imperial player and you just focus on your um, uh, on your characters okay uh, and progress through the campaign uh, and there's also a fan-made uh, imperial assault app uh, i haven't tried it yet but uh, basically uh, the official uh, this is explained in the buyer's guide video if you do watch that but basically when you play the app that's a separate campaign uh, from uh, the, there's campaigns that are included in the official app for solo and co-op play but those are different from the ones included in the box so what the fan-made uh, red jack automated uh, imperial player allows you to do it allows you to experience the campaign content that came in the box originally so it doubles the replayability and also when you download the fan-made app that is heavily inspired by the official app it also lets you play those campaigns uh, with an automated system, much like in the official app. So there's many ways in which you can exp uh, play this solo and experience the original content that came in the boxes, okay? Not necessarily the, the uh, separate campaigns that came in the apps, all right? So this all uh, explained in the, uh, in the uh, video. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun working on that video and there's also a file. So uh, check it out if you're interested in, in uh, you know, getting into this system for solo play. But once I finish painting uh, the minis, uh, I'll definitely revisit this. Uh, there's just so much content for it uh, as well uh, because, you know, it's been supported for years, although they're not coming out with new content uh, by now. But 
just just the core box experience folks that was one of the most beautiful board gaming experiences that i've ever had so just at least get the core set and just use the official app and play and i guarantee you that you'll have a blast all right so that's star wars imperial assault Next, we have the most played game in my collection. At over 150 plays, we have Star Wars Destiny. And it's soluble thanks to the Destiny Encounters variant uh, that I created. Now, uh, the reason why I created this is because uh, I love Marvel Champions, Lord of the Rings, Arkham Horror, you know, the solo co-op fantasy flight game um, LCGs. And I was really sad that there wasn't a solo co-op Star Wars LCG. Uh, so I put a lot of work in this. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to uh, play with your Star Wars Destiny decks against an AI. And it's modeled after uh, Marvel Champions. So you know how in Marvel Champions you'll have a villain. Uh, and in this case, uh, you know, you'll be able to play against both heroes and villains. But you have a villain and then each villain will have its own deck. And then you shuffle it with a, a deck of standard cards, all right, that each, vil each uh, villain encounter set uses. So it's modeled after uh, Marvel Champions in the same way. So uh, these are the uh, encounter sets that I have released to date. So you have Luke, Vader, Boba, Grievous, Rancor, and you have Obi-Wan uh, at different points uh, throughout uh, the films, okay? Uh, and there's more coming. So... Uh, each of these will have their own deck and there's different difficulty settings so i created this variant so that even if you don't have a collection you can just have fun with just a starter deck okay uh, so there's a starter difficulty setting and then even if you're a, a seasoned player uh, you, there's uh, higher difficulty settings and there's many other ways of adjusting difficulty all right it's very modular i made it so that it's very modular and it's as clean as possible. It does require a bit of work. You do have to print cards and make them at home or you can buy them professionally made. I'll leave links to all, all of that. I recently made a, a updated uh, rule book and also a new tutorial. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave you a link to the playlist so that you see how the variant plays and also so that you learn uh, what you need to buy if you wanna get started. Uh, but you do need to buy, of course, official Star Wars Destiny a product and then you just buy the AI decks okay uh, and if you've played Marvel Champions it'll feel very familiar all right um, now uh, do keep in mind uh, Star Wars Destiny is a cancelled uh, uh, trading card and dice game it was cancelled in early 2020 so the products tend to go on clearance and on sale very often uh, so it's it's not difficult to gain access to this product at a, at a pretty good price, okay? And there's a very vibrant uh, uh, market for singles if you want to buy your favorite characters. But I discussed this uh, uh, extensively in the uh, buyer, Solo Buyer's Guide video that I released just last week if you want to get started in this. Now, I rank this very high because... Uh, this offers an experience like no other for me. And the reason why I put so much work into it is because I want you to also experience it because I'm just, uh, you have no idea how many times I've read a comment from someone saying, I want, I could make a collage. I really should, should have just screenshotted every time I say this. Like I want a solo co-op LCG from FFG. Why won't uh, FFG make a solo co-op LCG? Uh, so, you know, this requires a bit of work, but it's pretty close to that, okay? If you want to get that experience and uh, maybe some of you have tried my uh, leaders variant for uh, Star Wars the deck building game and again the reason why I put so much effort into that is because I, I just want more solo Star Wars games there just isn't enough uh, at least on an official level uh, I did mention Imperial Assault and that's great uh, but that game requires a lot of uh, setup and the miniatures and it's a table hog I just want an LCG. I just want a Star Wars solo LCG, but this is it. It just needs a bit more content. I think once I add more enemy enemies for you to play against, this might rank higher in subsequent years. But to me, folks, this is like gaming nirvana. And there's a reason why it ranks so high for me because uh, this is just so easy to get to the table, all right? I just grab a deck, I grab an enemy, shuffle the enemy deck, and I'm good to go in like five minutes and I get a, a dueling, a trading card game dueling experience um, with the Star Wars flavor. And it's just so wonderful. And if you've played Magic, uh, you, uh, you and especially Commander, this might sound familiar to you. You'll see a Commander uh, or like, you know, a legendary creature and you're going to want to make a deck around it. 
Well, in Star Wars, here you build your deck around uh, one or more characters, and here it, it's it's just very similar to Commander in that sense. I'll go to my to my character binder, and I'll see a character that either you know for thematic reasons I want to build a character, uh, I want to be the, build a deck around that character for thematic reasons, or uh, the character just has an interesting mechanic, and I want to go ahead and build a deck that synergizes with those mechanics. Uh, so to me, folks, this is just a gaming solo board gaming nirvana. All right, and again, the reason why I put all of that work to make the variant as accessible and as crystal clear as possible for anyone is so that you can also experience it. Okay, um, because there there just isn't anything like this officially available. All right, and since the game was canceled. Uh, there's a committee uh, of folks that have created new sets since that includes the new movies, uh, that includes the new uh, Disney Star Wars movies and whatnot. So they've continued and they've kept the game alive. So you can buy sets and uh, completely, uh, you know, officially printed, uh, you know, professionally printed. All right. Uh, so uh, there's just so many ways for you to expand, and I discuss I discuss it all in detail in the buyer's guide. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, folks, this Star Wars Destiny Encounters, and it's just uh, I I just play this so much, and all of those 150 plays, it doesn't include all the play testing I did for uh, you know for each enemy uh, to balance it and all of that. So it's probably the two or three hundreds of all the times that I've played this. Uh, but it, this just doesn't get old because there's just so many possibilities for character pairings and decks. Uh, so check out, I'll, I'll, again, I'll leave a link to the playlist if you want to see more what this is about and you want to see how it plays or the tutorial or the buyer's guide if you want to get started. Uh, I'll leave all of that there. Uh, but yeah, folks, that's Star Wars Destiny Encounters, my most played game by far. Moving on, we have Iron Helm. Uh, this is a solo dungeon crawler that you can get from the Game Crafter or you can also get the print and play files from PMP Arcade. And uh, I first got this game uh, at the end of uh, 2020, my first year in the hobby. Uh, so I have a bit of a history with this game. So I got it at the end of 2020, played it a few times, thought it was okay, didn't visit it for a while, decided to trade it. Uh, and then I, I reacquired it, but what I did was I got the print and play file. Uh, and it, it is a substantial amount of cards, it's like about 100 or so cards and uh, some tokens and I do I do kind of regret the amount of work that I had to spend on time honestly uh, I don't ever want to do a print and play of that magnitude again after that but I am glad I did because when I tried the when I tried it the second time I absolutely fell in love with this game don't know why that hasn't really happened uh, many times in my since I started the hobby I typically I know the first time if I like a game and once I let it go I let it go for good uh, that's been uh, the the majority of the cases with uh, with how I handle games, but yeah, the second time I played the print and play file, I, I got absolutely hooked way more than the first time. And uh, remember that uh, dopamine award I gave after the virus uh, for this year? Uh, well, last year this would have been this would have won the. A dopamine award 100% the the my dopamine seal of approval goes to Iron Helm retroactively for 2022 because when I got this I played it for a few weeks and I was absolutely hooked this is the only thing I played and it made me then reacquire a physical copy from uh, the game crafter plus all the content to date there's just so much content that goes in this box it's insane sleep that everything okay uh, there's one thing I'm missing uh, there's a second uh, dungeon deck that uh, Jason Glover made this year. I need to, uh, I need to acquire that. That's the only thing I'm missing. Uh, but uh, I'll say this though: uh, you might not like this game if you like uh, randomness, because uh, it can be pretty random uh, and punishing. You know, it is a roguelike style a dungeon crawler. But I like the stories it tells. Love the art. It's big, big selling po point of this though is the art. Just gorgeous art uh, by Jason. Uh, and also Daniel, just uh, great art, uh, and I, I love the stories it tells, the variety, uh, once you add the expansions, this game does benefit a lot from expansions, another caveat, uh, you know, the, the base game, it can get pretty samey really quick, but the expansions do add more variability, all right, uh, so yeah, Iron Helm, just a, a tremendous uh, indie title that you can get from Game Crafter or uh, print it yourself at home, and I do feel bad for folks that uh, have to pay ridiculous shipping prices if you live outside of the US if you want to get titles like this from the Game Crafter. I hope that they uh, figure something out one day where 
it doesn't have to be that bad for folks abroad but uh, yeah iron helm I'll do a bit more research on it uh, i do know that it's not for everyone uh, the randomness might be an issue um, you know the sameness of the dungeon deck because uh, there, there's a way that you can game it uh, you typically want to avoid combat for example uh, so there's some details that uh, you know might uh, turn you off so make sure that you do a bit of extra research watch other reviews read about it watch some gameplay might be for you but yeah uh, this is just one of my favorite uh, dungeon crawlers and a big uh, one other big benefit is that you know it's not a multiplayer game with um, you know a solo mode or not a cooperative game where you have to control multiple characters it's just you uh, it's just you by yourself just one character and uh, just i love that this is one of those games in my collection that offers that i don't have to control multiple characters it's just my character delving into the dungeon and you know uh, trying to survive as long as possible so that's iron helm great title by jason glover next we have fields of fire and folks this was my first solo board game. The reason why I'm here talking to you today, the reason why I have my channel, and the reason why I started this hobby. Well, in part. So I have an interesting history with this game, right? So the first time I read about this game was all the way back in 2009. So back then, all I really ever played as far as t tabletop goes was Magic. And that was the, that's been the case pretty much ever since I was a teen. Like, that's the only tabletop game I've played. There's some exceptions I used to... I've played Yu-Gi-Oh! and, you know, World of Warcraft, TCG, and, and you know, the occasional gateway board game. But, uh, you know, that was it at the time, right? And uh, I had a, one of those magazines where you can check for Magic the Gathering prices, okay? So I was, in a, I was sitting in a train, you know, on my uh, ride waiting, and I'm reading this magazine, and sometimes those magazines had other material, right? It wasn't just Magic the Gathering prices. They had other stuff thrown in there. And there was a review of Fields of Fire, and I remember reading it, and it said that it was a solitaire game. Like this cover that you see here, it was in that article, and this cover is like burnt in my mind, right? I remember seeing it, and it said solitaire game, and I'm like, wait, what? A solitaire board game? How does that work? Like I was just, I was just like, like baffled by that concept. Like, but it, it, it always like stuck in my mind, right? Like that. So skip to 10 years later, right? And I still like played, so that's pretty much stayed the case. I only played Magic, but then, you know, uh, Catan became really big, Splendor. So there's a couple other games that I played uh, with my family, but that, that was it. So Magic, Splendor, um, uh, Catan, and Uno. <laughs> that, that's, that was like my board gaming experience. So uh, pandemic starts, right? And, you know, everything's shutting down. We're, we're going to be stuck home for God knows how long. So uh, I remember reading about this, like all of those years back. And I said, well, you know what? Um, you know, since I'm not going to be able to play Magic and I still want to be able to play some kind of tabletop thing, uh, I'll go ahead and order this. And so, yeah, that's how this ended up being my first solo board game. And damn, folks, uh, what a game to get, <laughs> what a game to jump into the hobby. The rulebook of this game is, uh, you know, if some of you might already know where this is leading to, if you've read this rulebook before, folks, this rulebook is so terrible. It... And I didn't know what I was getting myself into because I had zero wargaming experience. And not that you shouldn't need wargaming experience, but you know, it definitely would have helped if I had some pedigree with board, uh, you know, more complex board games or war games in general. But no, I had zero uh, experience prior with war games. So, uh, but that you know, not again, not that I should have any because this rulebook is still. The original rulebook that released with this, even the second edition one, is objectively terrible. I'm sorry, just awful. But uh, I persevered. I must have spent like a hundred hours, folks. Like a hundred. I'm not exaggerating. Like we were stuck at home, so we were, weren't doing anything <laughs> else. Okay, so uh, I had a lot of free time, and I must have spent like a hundred hours over uh, several weeks figuring out, you know, uh, racking my head how uh, I'm just figuring out how to play this damn game, but it paid off, folks, because once I finally uh, figured it out, this game just has, it It blew my mind. Like, the, the picture that this paints, uh, the stories that it tells with the procedurally generated maps using these map cards, uh, and with the, um, uh, with the way that you command your platoon, and uh, you, you know, you command your units, you move them around, you explore, uh, you know, you explore the map, 
and you uncover enemies and you know the, the way that they can jump into uh, you know the, the way that they can get um, attacked with artillery or jump into machine gun fire or step into mines um, a line of fire and and you know spotting the sniper and you throwing artillery back at the enemy like the, the stories that this tells and the, the tactical situations that this creates is is just insane and even if it might have been a matter of you know me being exposed for the first time to this type of game i still this i think this still holds up it you know you can read testimony of other folks that have played this game and other folks will testify how much this game holds up and how amazing it is, right? Uh, so I just have a really soft spot for this game because it's what started it all for me. And I'm waiting for the Deluxe Edition rulebook because, you know, I've played so many other games since and I would love to jump back into this, but learning it is a nightmare. Uh, but I just love what this game does. And also keep in mind that this is a diceless system. Um, you, you know, you don't roll dice for anything. You use, everything is determined with this deck, and it's insane uh, what it does, right? Uh, this, these cards have so many uses. They determine uh, the outcome of hits, uh, the outcome of when when you're trying to spot enemies, when you're trying to, uh, you know, um, uh, fire off artillery to see if it, it, it connects or not, uh, how many action points you get at different parts of the round. Uh, so it, it completely uh, foregoes dice uh, for this. And I just find that uh, I don't have another game in my collection that does that. It's, it's just very cool how everything is determined through this. And uh, there's diff different uh, theaters of war. You have uh, Norman, uh, you know, World War II Normandy, you have uh, Korea, and then you also have Vietnam. Okay? There's a campaign system if you want to you know, uh, play missions in a string. Yeah, folks, I don't think that this will ever leave my top 20. And uh, this just has a, sent a huge sentimental value for me because it's what started it all. It's what planted that seed in my brain of the idea of solitaire board games. Uh, so yeah, that's Fields of Fire. And last thing, if you know which magazine I'm talking about, by the way, if any of you know exactly which magazine had that review of Fields of Fire in it, uh, please let me know because I've been trying to figure out and hunt down which magazine had that review of Fields of Fire for a while, just because of nostalgic value, really. Yeah, uh, please, uh, you know, send me a message or, or you know, uh, hit me, send me a DM on Board Game Geek on, or put it in the comment section. So yeah, that's Fields of Fire, folks, uh, the uh, absolute uh, best GMT title and uh, World War II uh, a war game that I have ever experienced, and I don't think that's going to change in a while. Moving on, we have Explored the Forests of Adrimon, and this is my Holy Grail solo Dungeons and Dragons board game experience. And that is a category of game that I've been trying to search for for a while, and I found this finally for the first time last year, providing me what I think is a role player experience akin to Dungeons and Dragons. I've tried other games that try that attempt to do this and very well by the way. For example, Dungeon Degenerates and Folklore the Affliction, which were in my honorable mentions, right? Folklore the Affliction was really close, really, really close to uh trumping this, but uh I I there's things that I like about this, uh, the way that it handles dice rolls and the way that everything uh, there's not as many illustrations so it leaves a lot more to your imagination and it uses pen uh, it uses the uh, dry erase boards which uh, you know involve the writing part uh, so that is more reminiscent of the you know uh, pen and uh, paper uh, dungeons and dragons experience uh, so nothing has been this as far as that when i first got this i was completely just uh, immersed in this world for weeks, all right. I would, you know, I would go to my gaming table and just multiple hours would go by, like, in just they would just fly, like, uh, you know, six, eight hours later of just me exploring this world with my party of characters. Uh, I've gotten the expansion since, and I'm also waiting for the um, uh, the fulfillment of the book, the campaign book that was released for this. So there's a campaign book that allows you to play a crafted, a handcrafted 
extensive campaign, uh, a narrative campaign with you know branching paths and everything, and uh, you know custom gear and all of that. It sounds amazing. So this is the second in the series, um, and the the campaign book that was released for the first one in the series. People have been raving about it, and they say that it's some of the best um, you know solo adventuring uh, RPGing that they've ever done. Uh, so I'm really salivating for uh, this uh, campaign book to arrive for uh, this, which is the second entry in the series. There's many other entries that have uh, happened for the series since, but I really like like the mystical forest uh, uh, setting here. That's why that's mostly why I went with this because when I was looking at the classes uh, for you know the the entries at the time when I bought this, this is the one that attracted me the most. Okay, I really like. Uh, it felt like the most classic Dungeons and Dragons, uh, uh, you know, setting for me. Okay, uh, but yeah, I highly recommend this. And the rule book is a bit tough to crack, but once you do, uh, this this game just flows really well. I know that the dry erase aspect of it might be a bit of an acquired taste, so make sure you do your research. I adored it. I absolutely adored it. The way that this uses the dry sea race boards. Combat is a bit mathy, uh, and it is a common complaint, a common criticism, and I do have to admit that that's just the game. Okay, it's not for everyone, but the sense of exploration that this offered me, very few games in my collection have have come close to this. Okay, I do have another game in my co uh, very co coming up soon after this that gave me a, a great sense of exploration, but. The, the sense of exploration, the sense of discovery, of figuring out how to use the items, moving around the map, beating bosses, leveling up, encountering events, and you know fighting, uh, fighting foes, uh, just wow, wow, just what a system! Just absolutely adore this, and like I said, I can't wait for the campaign book to arrive. So that's the Hexporid system. Look into it. Great adventuring system, works great solo. I do recommend multi controlling multiple characters though. Technically you can play with one character, but I think you lose a lot there uh, because of not being able to synergize and assign different roles to characters. But technically you can play it solo from what I understand. But yeah, that's Explored, The Forest of Adrimon, my holy grail D&D in board game form. Next we have Shadows of Brimstone, and I played this for the first time this year. And this is just one of those games where it makes it difficult not to buy new games. Uh, I know that's, uh, you know, the, there's a mentality that I respect uh, where, and sometimes I do try to exercise that where, man, I have so many games on my shelf, why should I buy a new game? I saw this on sale during summer, did my research, sounded very interesting, decided to give it a shot. And man, do I really want to live in a world or in a timeline where I decided not to pick this up and not play it? No. I loved it. I absolutely love this game, man. Like, I, I, I'm so glad I got it, and I'm not gonna stop buying new games like anytime soon because I, and you know, sometimes there there will be some games where like I don't care, like I, I could have skipped that. But then there's these games, man. Like these games that, where were you? Like I, I this is just the best dungeon crawler that I've got. But it's a multifaceted game that offers uh, other things, right? Not, it's not just a dungeon crawling experience. So uh, it's a bit of a lifestyle game in the sense that, uh, you know, there's the miniature painting aspect to it, which is huge. I made a video where you, you can see the miniatures more in detail. It's a 30 minute, uh, you know, extended thoughts on, on the game, right? So I'll leave a link to that if you want to watch it. But uh, this game offers spruce, right? Uh, uh, in the same vein as uh, you know, uh, like Warhammer Spruce, right? Most mi miniatures that come with solo board games that I've bought, um, they're all, you know, resin sculpts, and they are rarely ever on par with the type of sculpts that, uh, you know, uh, Spruce offered with the level of detail. So, you know, this game will require you to, at the very least, assemble miniatures, if not paint them. Obviously, you know, obviously painting's not for everyone. Uh, it can be time-consuming, but I absolutely adored assembling and painting these and I do have some background with that hobby there was a very short period of period of time where I played Warhammer so I learned you know the assembling and painting skills uh, and you know because I'm a solo board gamer I didn't really have an outlet for me to utilize those painting uh, skills that I learned or right? an assembly so which I do miss I don't like the Warhammer game the, uh, itself I know I don't really miss that uh, I like the lore and I like the hobby of assembling the minis, right? 
Uh, and now I have an outlet for that, and that's Shadows of Brainstorm, and that was just such a pleasant surprise. And it's not just that, folks. The, the hobby aspect is amazing, especially if you already, you know, if you're a miniature painting and you already enjoy the hobby, but it's not just that. This is the best dungeon crawler that I have played, okay? Uh, the, the, you know, the sense of exploration uh, and character development that this offers with the leveling up, with acquiring loot, uh, the, the rules are a bit dense uh, to get through, but, you know, they're clear and thorough and, uh, you know, I didn't really have any issues with, like, looking up questions or anything. Keep in mind that this is the revised edition, so they did, you know, uh, add more clarifications to the rulebook and all of that. But this system is just so wonderful. Uh, once you uh, learn how to play it, you can then expand it, and it does benefit a lot from expansions, uh, so... It's like Legos. I remember reading that uh, a comment somewhere on Board Game Geek describing Shadows of Brimstone. It's like Legos. So there's so many expansions and things that you can add to, you know, to cater to whatever experience you're looking for. Do you want more enemy variety? Do you want more hero variety? Uh, you know, do you want terrain? Um, you know, do you want more items? So there's so and the the great thing about these expansions is that they rarely add more rules uh, overhead, if if any. Like it's just very little rules overhead. It's typically just, you know, item cards, which they just add more variety. You just buy items, you, you shovel them into your item deck, that's it, all right? Uh, you want more enemy variety, you just throw the enemy card into the random enemy deck, and now when they come out, you just go get the miniature. So it's so easy to integrate expansions. Now, do keep in mind that your wallet will absolutely hate you if you get into this game. The rabbit hole with this game, folks, is real. You've been warned, uh, but... Oh my god, I, I just can't say enough good things about this game. Uh, some folks, okay, uh, you know, to counter some of the uh, enthusiasm, I'll, I'll say this. Some folks do consider this a bit of a beer some pretzel game uh, as far as, you know, the, uh, the tactics. It doesn't offer the most amazing tactics uh, for sure. It's, it's not the reason why I played, uh, you know, uh, you know, the... Uh, the dungeon crawling experience, the sense of exploration, the character progression, the leveling up, the looting. Uh, the way, the, the reason why the exploration is so cool in this game is because there's these other worlds, right? So you can you step into portals and you go from being in a uh, you know in an old west uh, western mine and you're in an ice world or in a lava world or in a swamp world. So the the exploration in this game is amazing. And uh, earlier I referred to other games offering me an awesome sense of exploration. The sense of exploration, the first time I stepped into another world with this, my characters, it was really cool. Like, it, it was very memorable the first time I stepped into another world. I felt like I was in an alien world, you know, I, you know going through one of those portals in the mine and just, you know, going from the mine to this winter, uh, or, you know, landscape. It was great the way that this, uh, you know, pr provided that uh, experience. And... Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had just with the core set, okay? Don't get me wrong. The amount of entertainment this will give you from, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the the hobby aspect, uh, you know, it'll keep you busy lifestyle-wise because of there's ways to improve it by printing uh, proxies or figuring out ways of, uh, of improving the way that you keep track of experience and gold. So it's a lifestyle, it's a great lifestyle game and there's so many ways to expand it. So... If you want to get into an amazing system and, you know, you don't mind your wallet hating you, uh, Shadows of Brimstone is one of the best ever. And it's just one of the best uh, dungeon crawlers that I've experienced. It's just so, so, so good. So much fun. Uh, and, yeah, uh, if, you, if you enjoy painting miniatures, even more so. And check out the extended thoughts if you want to also uh, check out how I... Uh, how I stored it and how I painted uh, my miniatures and you know I'll discuss other things uh, more in detail there but yeah that's Shadows of Bristone so glad that I jumped into the system just absolutely love it Shadows of Bristone moving on we have Too Many Bones and this was my intro to the Chip Theory Games library and ever since I got it I've just fallen in love with it and this was on my last year's top 20 as well so I just love the nice uh, RPG experience that this offers uh, and in quick one-off sessions, no campaign commitments. And this sets up really quick and it fits on, on it, it's pretty efficient the way that you can fit this on smaller tables. And you can control just one character, two characters, three or four characters. Uh, so it works great uh, and many character counts is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I do recommend that you settle at three characters eventually once you, you're comfortable with the system. Uh, you typically only play one character if you're if you're trying to figure out 
how a gear lock works, which are the characters, so that's what their characters are named here, all right? Uh, so with the base game, you get a bunch of tyrants to play against, uh, and then uh, four gear lock characters. And a lot of the variety will come from how many gear locks you have. So if you want to get into this system, I recommend that you get the uh, base game plus a couple of gear locks. But even then, I played when I first got this game, I played just the base game a whole bunch without even touching the extra gear locks, okay? Uh, so, uh, you know, when, when you try this for the first time, you're going to want to get everything. So be, be careful. It can be it can definitely be a money sink. But uh, this system is just so wonderful. Sets up quick, offers, uh, you know, uh, in quick setup sessions and that fit in many uh, uh, table spaces. Uh, a RPG experience, right? No campaign aspect, although you can get a campaign uh, aspect from uh, the Age of Tyranny expansion, but that's gotten mixed results, so uh, mixed reviews, so uh, you know your mileage will vary. I'm not really interested in the campaign aspect. There's other games that will scratch the campaign itch, but this just offers a wonderful one-off session experience, and I love the tactical combat on the mat, okay, and level leveling of the characters and the, the wacky quests. The setting that's one other thing that makes this stand out. It's not your it's not your standard fair D and D. Which I, I'm a sucker for, by the way. I love like generic D&D, uh, high fantasy. I absolutely adore that. But this does make it stand out. It has a wacky setting, uh, you know, with the gear lock characters and the villains. There's def the folks uh, over at Chip Theory Games definitely have a sense of humor. All right, uh, uh, interesting sense of humor. But uh, yeah, so uh, very very cool game. And you know, like I said, this was on my list last year. Again, not on the on the top. 20 this year. I don't think this is going away from my top 20 anytime soon. Just such a cool system and the, the components are just a cherry on top. I know that a lot of people balk at the price, but up until this point, I have not had a experience like a premium experience like this component wise. So once you have this in your hands for the first time, folks, you'll, you'll understand why it costs uh, as much as it does. And you know, it, you, you'll, feel, you'll feel like a king or queen <laughs> just, just playing this. Uh, and owning this, all right. It's, it's just so, such a cool system. Love too many bones, all right. So, uh, you know, re read into it, uh, you know, and if you do get it, make sure to add a couple extra gear locks in there for variability. But yeah, that's uh, too many bones. Amazing RPG experience on a quick set. Next, we have Dune Imperium. And this is a game that was also on my list last year. And I remember uh, growing up uh, playing the PC Dune games, although this is not that type of game. It's not a strategy game uh, per se. Uh, it's a deck building a worker placement game with uh, some you know, very interesting uh, elements, all right? And uh, I remember pre-ordering this uh, at the time that, uh, you know, the first year where I started the hobby, uh, you know, I'm reading about this game coming out and I see that it has a solo mode. And, you know, like I said, I grew up playing those Dune games on PC and so, so I have a very soft spot for the Dune franchise. And, you know, I, I, was, I was in that infancy of the solo board gaming hobby and I see that there's a Dune game coming out with a solo mode. Uh, so I instantaneously pre-ordered it. And folks, they, did this blow me away, all right? And not just me, because this, this, I saw this day after day rise to the top of the rankings in Board Game Geek. And also now it's a big, uh, big player in the uh, solo uh, 200 top list, uh, all right? So this is just a beloved title among the solo board gaming community and it remains uh, for me to this day. Uh, I have the expansions and I, and I have not tried them yet. Uh, I do really need to do that soon because people rave about them so much and this is just one of the biggest <laughs> regrets of uh, the past year. I have not uh, broken out those expansions yet. Uh, when I first got this, I played it uh, for like three weeks, uh, like nonstop, uh, and I just could not believe that. Because uh, the thing is, you know, uh, movie and video game tie-ins, they tend to be pretty poor. So I really didn't have many expectations for, from this game when I ordered it. But once I started playing it, my God, like I was just blown away. It's just so much fun. The, the solo mode just works so well. And uh, it, it offers different difficulty settings and there's so much variability with the characters. I can't believe that I haven't tried the expansions yet. I really need to get around to doing that. But yeah, folks, that's, that's Dune Imperium. Like, what can I say that hasn't been said about it already? It's just such an amazing game. And also with the new uh, Dune Imperium uh, game, standalone expansion game coming out, uh, Uprising, I think is the name. 
Uh, of course, I'll acquire that at some point, but I still need to, uh, you know, try this with the expansions. Anything that will come out in this game, uh, you know, product line, I'm gonna get it just because I love it so much. Uh, but yeah, just such a good uh, thinky uh, experience with twists and turns and just with such an easy AI to manage. Uh, love it so much. That, that's done Imperium Falls. I really, uh, I really don't think that I, can, uh, that I can add anything that hasn't been said about this game already. Just such an amazing solo board game. If you haven't tried it, do yourself a favor and get Dune Imperium. Moving on, we have Arkham Horror, the card game, the first LCG that uh, I've mentioned in my list. This was also in my top 20 last year, and it could have almost slipped out of my top 20 this year just by virtue of how long it's been since I had played it, but I decided to pull this out this year, I played it a bunch, and it just uh, you know, revitalized my, my love for it. Uh, and it ranks last compared to the other LCGs, so a bit of well, spoiler there, you'll see soon, but um, you know, the biggest reason for that, honestly, is because al although I think this is one the deepest one by far compared to the others, uh, the campaign of aspect of it really prevents it from me playing it often. I'm just not much of a campaign game uh, guy, folks. Uh, just, just, it's just the way it is. Uh, I, I really tend to gravitate more towards games that um, towards games that allow me to just play them one-off sessions and that's it. Um, so the other LCGs allow for that much better. Uh, but I can't deny the amazing deck building that this offers, the amazing card play, the depth, uh, which I hadn't realized the first time that I played it. Uh, the, just the depth of, of the game as far as the mechanics, I didn't really appreciate them the first time, but then when, when I came back and played it again uh, and I started looking up online guides, my gosh, my gosh, folks, like I, I, I didn't realize the depth that this game uh, has mechanically, all right, and how, how much it can offer for you to improve your deck building and the way that you play and your strategy. Uh, I made an extended thoughts video on this where I also discussed storage for this game, which is a bit of a beast, uh, and, and also a, to a favorite topic of mine, just talking about storage. I love that stuff, so uh, I'll leave a video to that. I'll leave a link to that if you want to check it out, but yeah. Uh, Arkham Horror, the card game, folks. Uh, you know, uh, what can I say? This game has a, such a good reputation and it ranks really high among solo games for a good reason. It offers such a nice narrative experience and just amazing. It just does almost everything right. It's, it's crazy. Uh, the, the one thing that people tend to um, uh, complain about is the chaos bag. I don't care. If, uh, like, it, it doesn't, it's not a negative for me. I can see why people hate it. You know, you do, a, you do all of these things and you still can fail a test. I understand. It doesn't bother me. I think that's kind of the that's just the game. And uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, as far as things that it doesn't do right, I think the core set. Uh, it, it just you need on you need expansions for this to shine. The core set, uh, even though they updated it, it's still pretty lackluster as far as content goes. I'll say this. Um, uh, the other core sets, like you know, the Marvel Champions core set, core set, for example, just offers so much more in that box. So that that's you know, when you put it in perspective and you compare, it just makes the Arkham Horror box look so much poorer and it, uh, uh, so much less of a, a value proposition when it comes to content. That's really my only complaint, just the lack of content in the core box. Uh, but other than that, well, and the campaign aspect, like it, it's you know, you, it, the way to get the best out of this is just by playing a campaign. And sometimes I just I'm just not up for that commitment. So this is the only reason why I don't play this more often, and it's the least played of the LCGs for me. But it's it's the I think uh, I would agree, and other people do that this is the deepest uh, of the three. All right, uh, and you know, and you know, the Arkham theme also is amazing. I love the art, I love the illustrations, the setting. It's just so cool. So yeah. Just amazing uh, LCG to get into. So Arkham Horror, the card game. Next, we have another living card game. And this time, it's Lord of the Rings. And I don't have the original box because I actually carved it uh, to create uh, this, all right? Uh, and here I have the first cycle and uh, the uh, four pre-constructed uh, decks, okay? Uh, and, you know, the tokens and all of that. Uh, I do have some other expansion uh, sitting in uh, you know some cardboard boxes, uh, but yeah, this is the box the box that I pull out when I want to play and uh, This game was the first LCG that I ever tried and uh, It just does such a really good job at scratching that Magic the Gathering edge to some extent Okay, uh, and one thing that it really has going for it is the fantasy setting, right? You know the Lord of the Rings inspired uh, fantasy uh, in, in many 
uh, ways like you know magic D and D, all of that. So it's nice to have a, a soluble uh, game in, with that aesthetic. Okay, and it you know when you see the art, it, there's just a lot of love put into this. And uh, you know keep in mind that the deck construction aspect is is pivotal in in this. Okay, so if you're not a deck construction person, it, it's tough to get into this. Although you know there's there's you know a website where you can check for uh, decks that you can build, uh, and it helps with that. Uh, and this game does also benefit a lot from expansions if you want to you know increase replayability. So bigger collections do uh, lend themselves for much higher replayability and enjoyment. I'm still in, in the first couple cycles. I've never really gone outside of the couple. The first couple cycles outside of the um, starter decks uh, that they released recently, which I love, by the way. Uh, and if any kind of game that offers a pre-constructed deck, I love that concept. I love playing with pre-constructed decks. Uh, not that I don't like th that construction myself. I love that, but you know, I just love that even when I played Magic, just playing with a pre-constructed deck out of the box. I, I just love that. So I'm glad that they offered that. Um, and you don't need every expansion for this to, uh, you know, to have a nice environment to play with, folks. And one other thing I'll say is that as far as playing one-handed or two-handed, um, you know, the one-handed experience with this can be pretty limited. Uh, you know, an, uh, an extended uh, collection will help with that uh, so that you can build a more robust solo deck. But I think that uh, to play more efficiently, you do have to control two decks at the same time, which can make it a bit of a table hog, all right? And uh, controlling two decks can be a bit much, uh, you know, as far as like juggling uh, all of those cards. Uh, so that's, that's the one unfortunate thing with this. Uh, some quests can feel impossible just controlling one uh, deck, right? But nevertheless, the experience is great even when controlling two decks. And at the same time, that can be a reason for doubling the replayability because when you play against a certain quest before you you want to beat it uh, you can try to beat it with a solo deck and then controlling two decks right and you know the the dynamics of building decks in both cases are very different right you're able to uh, you know uh, s spread the roles a bit more and have one deck focus on one thing versus the other so that deck construction when you when you know that you're building two decks separately, it's very satisfying. So yeah, that's Lord of the Rings LCG, one of the better LCGs that you can get if you want to scratch that Magic the Gathering itch. Uh, love the art, uh, you know the setting, the uh, you know the, the deck construction, the card play is great. It definitely shows its age a bit compared to the others because it looks like they have learned a lot from uh, you know this game from this design sense, but it still holds up really well. Uh, so uh, just go ahead and get a core set if you haven't tried this out just such a wonderful LCG especially if you have that Magic the Gathering uh, you know pedigree there's a lot to appreciate uh, here so Lord of the Rings LCG and finally we have my number one LCG and that's Marvel Champions and I think this is the one of the best lifestyle games that you could get into you could just uh, you know, put uh, all your money uh, towards this system every month and just, just keep it fresh and you'll always have many ways uh, to play and keep yourself entertained. And uh, the core box for Marvel, Marvel Champions just offers so much more than the Arkham Horror or the Lord of the Rings core box. There's just a lot of content there. There's many heroes, there's many villains, and there's many different combinations that you can try. Uh, the deck building here is pretty interesting because uh, only uh, like pretty much half of the deck is already picked up for you when you choose a hero uh, and there's some auto include cards so you only have to basically pick 20 cards when you build a deck which you know is, the deck building is not as involved as Arkham Horror or uh, Lord of the Rings but that might be good for some people that don't care that much about deck building all right it allows you to build decks faster okay uh, and this just plays uh, so it's just such a pleasure to learn as well. It, it uh, the rules uh, once you learn them, you r rarely ever ever have to revisit them. So this is just in my collection. This is one of the easiest things to put on the table. All right, uh, I just I just set up and I'm pretty much good to go. I rarely ever have to recall any rules. It's a pretty uh, clean system, and they have done very interesting things to keep it fresh with the new sets. This is the only LCG where. I still to this day buy all the content just because I love it so much. Although some of it is unplayed and that's fine. I just love the variety that it offers. And the biggest reason for me buying the uh, 
content for this uh, consistently is because I can just pick up a character deck from a recent set and just play it against an old villain or a, against a new villain. Like, it's okay. There's not some kind of continuity commitment where I need to play everything in order. I can play everything out of order, and I love that, all right? Uh, I, for, newer set, for newer sets, I just typically keep the, uh, the hero decks in their box, and I just bring them out and play them uh, like that, all right? Just pre the pre-constructed decks. Now, uh, one huge advantage that this has over the other two LCGs is how well it plays solo. It can still be a bit swingy, but it's not that bad, all right? This, this plays exceptionally well just controlling one hero. So that's a gigantic advantage that this has. Um, but uh, this is the one out of the three LCGs, this is the one that I played the least controlling uh, two characters, just because uh, I just, I don't know, like it just gets a bit out of control with how many effects there are in play. Uh, for whatever reason, like I just avoid playing this two-handed as much as possible and I just try playing uh, just controlling one character. It's just so much cleaner and it occupies less table space, doesn't require me to build more decks. Uh, so yeah, I do try, I do, I do tend to gravitate more just playing towards playing, just controlling one character and that's it. The one sad thing about that is that uh, you miss out on playing protection decks. Now, there are viable solo protection aspect decks, uh, you know, definitely, but, uh, you know, protection is meant for the most part to be played in teams, right, so that you can help another hero. And that's mainly the reason why I play two-handed every now and then, just because I want to try out a protection deck. But that pretty much is it. I stick with uh, controlling one hero, and it's so wonderful, works so well. And uh, yeah, so this is my favorite out of the three for sure. Uh, I do prefer the fantasy setting in Lord of the Rings. I don't care that much for Marvel uh, as a franchise, uh, but you know, it's not that I actively dislike it. I do like it all right, so I do enjoy the IP. Uh, so, you know, it's not a deterrent for me. I do enjoy the IP, but it's not my favorite part of this. It just, it just has amazing uh, card play and amazing content, and they keep delivering more and more. And I think that this is just one of the best choices if you want it to stop playing Magic and you still wanted to scratch that itch, this is your best choice in my opinion. Uh, maybe split this between Lord of the Rings and, and Marvel Champions uh, so that you go back and forth between both to keep the settings fresh, But uh, or if you want more involved that construction, you got Lord of the Rings, but uh, you know, if, if I had to pick one to keep forever, I I'm pretty sure it will be Marvel Champions. So uh, yeah, uh, so th I think this is the best, um, the current best, uh, LCG that a solo player, player could ask for. Marvel Champions. Moving on, we have Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. And folks, this is the best campaign experience I've had to date with any uh, solo board game. And I think that there's no better value in all of board gaming than this box right here, especially because um, these days this box goes on sale very often and you can find it for under $30 typically, even like $20 if you wait for like Black Friday sales and things like that. And you know, the, this is just packed with content and it just has a campaign that respects your time. I know that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I appreciate value as much as any other person, but sometimes just some campaigns are just so long that you know, you just kind of move on, right? And this campaign has the perfect length, uh, uh, around 17 to 20 scenarios, depending on, you know, how the campaign plays out, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, this was in my first year of the hobby and oh, wow, uh, I, this is just one of the best experiences I've ever had. Now, where this suffers is the replayability. Once you play it for the first time, there really isn't a whole lot of a reason to come back to it. Uh, one day, eventually, I do plan to play this again with the uh, two characters that I didn't use the first time. Uh, I used uh, Hatchet and Demolisher, I think it was the, the name of the character. Uh, so I need to play it again with the Red Guard and the Void Warden, all right? So I do want to play it again one day uh, with the two characters that I didn't use the first time. But I love how quick this sets up with the genius um, the sign of the Spiral Book, okay? I did eventually buy the big, uh, the big box Gloomhaven, you know, after graduating from this, and I do enjoy it on occasion. But the setup in that is on, you know, when you have to gather the tiles and assemble the map, that's a nightmare compared to the spiral book design. I really wish that they, and you know, many other people do as well, uh, wish that uh, Cephalofair Games just would release a spiral. 
uh, bound uh, book version of the scenarios so that you don't have to spend all of that time assembling the maps, okay? Um, but yeah, it's it, it was a bit tough going from this to the, having to assemble the tiles, but uh, you know, Gloomhaven, it, it just, and it, you know, it was my introduction to the system and, uh, you know, at that time, Gloomhaven already had been super famous, so this was just coming out and people were loving it, so I was like, you know, well, what the heck, let's pick it up, and wow. This is one of the best solo board gaming experiences and campaign experiences, for that matter, that I've had, all right? And again, the best value in solo board, in board gaming in general, not just solo board gaming, but board gaming in general, in my opinion, what you can, what you get for this box for like twenty to thirty bucks these days, absolutely nuts. All right, what what you get for this? So yeah, that's uh, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, folks. Nothing, uh, very few things will beat this for me as far as uh, value and campaign experience. And finally, we arrive at my number one undisputed solo board game to date, and that's Mage Knight. And folks, this was my second solo board game after Fields of Fire. And when people say that they have an issue with the rulebook here, I'm sorry, I don't say it. And you know what? Because my experience immediately prior to this was Fields of Fire. So if you know how awful that rulebook is, well, you'll know that this, to me, it was a palate cleanser. I had absolutely zero issues learning how to play this game because, um, you know, uh, <laughs> Fields of Fire basically broke me. So to to me, this was like the most delicious dessert as far as, uh, you know, rule books go. So um, I had gotten this and uh, Fields of Fire at the time as, you know, I, I got those two games to keep myself busy during the pandemic. But this was my proper, uh, you know, as much as I love Fields of Fire that, you know, that had some issues, I, as I mentioned earlier. But this was a much more proper introduction to the world of solo board gaming. And what an introduction this was. And I don't think, I honestly don't think, folks, that this will ever leave my number one spot. Uh, nothing offers the, uh, the all of the different elements that this combines together so well. The exploration, uh, you know, the, de the deterministic combat, the card play, the deck building, uh, you know, the, the different elements like gaining allies and using them and, you know, using spells and, and artifacts. Uh, and the mana system, you know, in, a, in an odd way, this reminds me a bit of magic for whatever reason, because it has, it has those, you know, at least thematically, it has those elements, like the mana, uh, it has like a pseudo mana system, it has the card play, and it, it really reminded me when I first played this, uh, you know, there were those times where I was playing uh, Commander in Magic the Gathering, and you know, there was some crazy board state, right? And I had a, a hand of like 20 cards because I played a spell that let me draw like 20 cards. So then I was pausing with my hand in that commander game, trying to see how I could, because I knew I had the, the pieces of the puzzle in my hand to win that game if I played my cards right and if I attack right. Well, when I assault a castle in Mage Knight, that's how I feel, okay? When you, when you, um, you know, get to that stage in the game, just puzzling with your hand, you know, it's it's such a satisfying brain burn. And there's just so much content in this from the different characters um, and uh, the way that the setup is done with the tiles. So, you know, the tiles are going to vary, uh, you know, uh, per setup. Uh, it's, and, you know, the different... Uh, cards that you're gonna see in, in the uh, spell and card offer and ally offer uh, during the game. So the replayability with this is insane. And there's, uh, I think the Lost Legion expansion is a must. By the way, I, I got the Ultimate Edition from the beginning. I, I treasure this box so much. It, 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 wow, what a what a contrast this gave me to Fields of Fire. And again, I'm not trying to crap on Fields of Fire. I love that experience, but it was such a contrast. And this is really what opened up like solo board gaming for me like i fell in love with this so much I, I couldn't believe that there were experiences like this that i had never uh you know uh, gone through like i didn't know this uh, such an experience existed that i could play at home like i you know i don't have to go to a store i don't have to like go to a store or planet or find a play group or uh you know or wait um uh, when the store is open for like a tournament and drive there no 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 i can get that satisfying card play and puzzle and brain burn uh, from home, all right? And this is really just what opened the floodgates uh, to this hobby for me. 
And uh, I'm going back to what I was mentioning with you know the, the barrier for learning this game, although my experience, as I explained, this ended up being a palate cleanser for me. I acknowledge that it's not that's not gonna be the case for everyone. And although it's a bit of a joke because of what happened with Fields of Fire, I don't recommend that you start the hobby with this if you don't, if you have no board, board gaming background. This definitely has a bit of a barrier, but if you uh, start with other more uh, beginner-friendly board games, do eventually get this, okay, if you haven't played it. And if you want to play, there's an amazing series of tutorials made by, uh, uh, made by uh, the legendary Ricky Royal. God bless Ricky Royal. Let's play some Mage Knights. Amen. Uh, okay, so yeah, so you can learn through his videos and then, uh, you know, just, I had no problems with the rulebook, but again, I, I can't, I, I can see how some people could have a, an issue with the rulebook. See, this game can be a bit uh, tough to learn for sure, but yeah, I, I don't think anything will beat this for me, folks. And uh, one thing I mentioned last year as well, uh, I didn't know that uh, this game was inspired by Heroes of Might and Magic, right? Which uh, I didn't play growing up, so I don't have some nostalgic tie for that game, but it just made me respect this game even more. The, the fact that Vlada was inspired by Heroes of Might and Magic, which is a, it's a, it's a legendary video game that lots of people adore. So it just made me respect it even more. So um, nothing beats this for me. And Spirit Island, uh, as much as I love Spirit Island, and I know that I, I don't think um, Spirit Island, Island will be the throne from the number one spot like ever at this point, but uh, Spirit, Island, Spirit Island did not come close at all to beating this from uh, the number one spot. This will always be my number one spot. And if I had to keep one game in my collection, this would be it. If I had to be left in an island alone with a game, this would be it. 100%, no doubt, all right? So, yeah, so that's how much I love uh, Mage Knight uh, Ultimate Edition, folks. So my number one solo board game of all time, bar none, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. All right, so that was my list, and here's to another amazing year of solo board gaming. Can't wait to see how the paradigm will change by next year. And I want to thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, feedback, go ahead and put them in the comment section. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.